Good morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this second Sunday in January on a sunny but cool day as we gather together as God's wonderful people. We continue to reach out to one another as we pray for one another, as we lift up one another, as we continue to make that difference in one another's lives. We reach out to the community around about us as we hear the cry of those that are in need, as we see those that are walking in darkness and we share the good news of the gospel with them. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to worship. Hymn number 398, Jesus Calls Us. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we continue to remember those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them. Um, Miss Juanita and and Diane uh, got home this week, and so we just ask the Lord to continue to be with them and continue to touch them and continue to be with them in a mighty way. Marlene is still struggling a little bit with the COVID, and we just ask the Lord to uh, touch her and help her. There were seven of us from Shiloh that's had it in the last two weeks, and we just lift up each and every one of them and just ask the Lord to continue to walk with each and every one of us as he continues to touch us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us, for watching over us and walking with us day by day to give us the strength to overcome all that we've been through. And Lord, we ask that you just continue to watch over all those that need your touch this day. Heavenly Father, continue to be with each and every one of them in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for your love and your concern that you have for each and every one of your precious children. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that mercy and for that grace that makes it all possible for each and every one of us to have life and to have it so abundantly and to have that assurance of eternal life. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who made himself available as that perfect sacrifice, as he offered up himself and shed his blood on Calvary's cross for each and every one of our sins, that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have that life and that we might have it 
so abundantly and have that life eternally. Heavenly Father, thank you for the hope that he gives unto each and every one of us each and every day. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in our hearts and guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to draw us closer to you and closer to one another that we might love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that need your touch this day. Lord, you know what each and every one's going through. And Lord, we just ask you to meet those needs today. And Heavenly Father, for those that are gathered here today, Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask for that touch, and we give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. We pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. Psalter reading is found on page 818 as we read from Psalm 98. O sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm has gotten the victory. The Lord has declared victory and has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. 
The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praise to the Lord with the lyric and with the lyric and the sound of melody. With trumpets. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. way of announcements, we will have our soup uh, meal together on the last Sunday in the month. The sign-up sheet is in the back. Be sure to sign up, and I hope that everybody will be able to stay as we fellowship together. So keep that in mind as we serve the Lord together, as we fellowship together. Thank you for your prayers this week and for the food that you brought by and appreciate everything that you have done for us. And we can't say it enough how much we appreciate each and every one of you as you continue to reach out to make that difference to help us along the way. I'd like to thank Jamie for filling in last Sunday for leading the worship and Reverend Saunders for the message that he brought and I appreciate it so much filling in. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for today and for the privilege we have to serve you and to make that difference in the world around about us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every gift that's been given this day. And Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, bless them in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, for those that continue to give week after week, Lord, we ask that you might bless them in a mighty way. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
This morning from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, beginning with verse 40, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John, for you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee and finding Philip. He said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. And Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the scripture and the message that you have given to me this day as I break the bread of life to your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come this morning to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is, do you hear what I hear? The Lord calling in the night, calling each and every one of us by name, saying, I got a new thing that I want you to do. He's calling each and every one of us from all walks of life to do something new, to make a difference in this world and community in which we live. Hannah 
loved the Lord, but she didn't have any children. She was barren. And she promised the Lord that if she had a son, she would give it to, to him. And she went to the priest, Eli, and he thought that Hannah was drunk. But she was grieving so for a child. And she told Eli, the priest, her story. And he said, you will conceive. And she did conceive. And she had a son, and his name was called Samuel. And she waited until he was weaned. And I don't know what age that would have been. But she took him to the temple and she gave him to the Lord under the direction of Eli the priest. And he would do different things there in the temple. But when he was somewhere around 12 or 13 years of age, in the midst of the night, there came that call. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went into where Eli was. And Eli was getting old and Eli was losing his sight. But he said, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go on back to bed. And so Samuel went back to the little room where he was staying. And then the voice came in the midst of the night again, Samuel, Samuel. And he went back to Eli again. And Eli said, well, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go lie down. And so he went back and he lay down again. And then the word of the Lord came to him again, Samuel, Samuel. He got up and he went to Eli the third time. Eli said, well, Samuel, I didn't call you. It must be the Lord calling you. So the next time when you hear your name called, just say, here I am, a servant of the Lord. And so it was that Samuel went and laid down. And the Lord came and stood over him and called him by name. Samuel, Samuel, and he stood and said, Here I am, Lord, your servant. And he told Samuel everything that would happen to Eli and his three sons because they had been disobedient. They had taken advantage of the temple. But he had a new thing for Samuel to do, and he called Samuel to do it. And so the next morning when Samuel got up, he didn't really want to tell Eli what the Lord had told him. But Eli said, tell me what the Lord told you. And so Samuel told him exactly what the Lord had said about him and his sons because they had been disobedient. And God would use Samuel to be a tremendous prophet and also a judge. But God didn't only call Samuel as a young man. When God had a new thing to do, and God said, I want to begin a new nation, and I want my people to be my people, and I want to be their God, he called Abraham to go from the urns of the Chaldeans to begin a new nation. When God had a new thing to do, when he heard the cry of the children in the land of Egypt, he called Moses. And Moses went and brought the children out of the land of Egypt. The people wanted a king. And so they called Saul to be their king. But God wanted David, and eventually God would call David a shepherd boy to become the king of Israel. 
Every time God has something new, God calls each and every one of us by name that we might carry out that which God has called us to do. God sent his son from the portals of glory to come down to a little manger in Bethlehem to be born because God had a new thing. Because God wanted to be reconciled to his people and God wanted to make it available not only for the Jews but for the Gentiles, for all of us to be saved, to have our sins forgiven and for us to be redeemed. And so Jesus Christ was born there in the manger in Bethlehem. At eight days, he was circumcised. At 40 days, he was offered up into the temple. And two turtle doves was offered up. Somewhere in the first two years of Jesus' life, the wise men came and they offered up the gifts of gold and myrrh and frankincense. God spoke to them in a vision and they went another way because Herod was on kill the newborn king. In the Gospel of Luke is the only place we find anything about Jesus' childhood. When he was 12 years of age, they went down to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. It was there that when they left, Jesus stayed behind and they supposed him to be among the kinfolks and relatives and the neighbors. But when they made that day's journey, they couldn't find Jesus. And so they returned to Jerusalem and they found Jesus sitting among those that was the wisest of all. And Jesus was speaking with them. And Mary said, well, why have you done this to us? And Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. It was there that Jesus went back to Nazareth with them and he grew in wisdom and strength. And then last Sunday, as we moved from the epiphany to the baptism of the Lord, it was there that John would say, Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. I'm not even worthy to loose the lackets of his shoes. I baptize with water for the remission of sin. But when he comes, he will baptize you with fire from above. And Jesus came into the Jordan Valley and there he was baptized by John, not for the remission of sin, but so that he could identify with each and every one of us. That even though he was fully divine, he was also fully human. And so it is when in our baptism we say to the world that we want to be a part of Christ. We want him to live and dwell in our hearts. We believe the scriptures. We believe that he's the son of God. And so it was there when Jesus was baptized that the Holy Spirit fell upon him along with the voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in him, I am well pleased. It was there that Jesus began to call his disciples. Now I want you to notice this morning the difference in those disciples because he, he calls each and every one of us from all walks of life. He calls us from different situations in life but he calls each and every one of us because he has a new thing for each and every one of us to do. If you go to the Gospel of Mark, it's only 16 chapters long. It's, the chapters are very short. In it, it says that Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee and he saw Andrew and Simon Peter there with their boat, and he called them, and immediately they followed him. And he went a little further, and he saw James and John cleaning his father's nets, and immediately he called them, and they followed him. Now this is John Mark writing on behalf of Simon Peter. Simon Peter was very 
straight and to the point with very few words. But then go to the Gospel of Luke. Luke was a physician. Luke was a scientist. And this is what Luke says about that same scripture that Jesus was preaching there by the Sea of Galilee and there was two boats. And Jesus got out into one of the boats and he said to Simon Peter, push out just a little ways. And so Simon Peter pushes out a little ways and he began to preach. And when he has finished preaching to the people, he says to Simon Peter, push out into the deep and throw out your nets. And Simon Peter said, but Lord, we have fished all night and we didn't catch anything. Lord, this is our occupation. This is what we do. But he said, nevertheless, I will cast my nets. And so when he cast his nets, they are filled with fish. And he called James and John in their boat. And they bring the boats and they fill both boats. And they come to the shore. And then Jesus says, follow me. And Andrew and Simon Peter and James and John follows Jesus. You see... For the Gospel of Luke, it took 24 chapters with a lot of those chapters having 60 verses or better. But that's the difference between Simon Peter and Luke who followed Apostle Paul. And if you put the writings of, of Luke and the writings of Apostle Paul together, you have the majority of the New Testament but then we go to the Gospel of John, and he says that two disciples followed Jesus that were John's disciples, and one of them was Simon Peter. And then they followed Jesus, and the next day he finds his brother Simon, and he brings him to Jesus. And Jesus said, oh, shall be called Cephas, which is the rock. And then the next day, he calls Philip, who is also from the town of Andrew and Simon Peter. And then Philip calls his friend, Nathaniel. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? But Jesus didn't give up on Nathaniel just because he said, can anything good come from Nazareth? He just simply says, you tell it like it is, Nathaniel. But Nathaniel, I knew you before you were under the fig tree, even before Philip called you. And he says to Nathaniel, I have a new thing for you. You will see the heavens open." And the angels will descend upon the Son of God. Every time Jesus has something new, he calls each and every one of us by name. Last Sunday, you had the Reverend Ken Saunders preach. One of the most eloquent preachers I've ever heard. He dotted every T, uh, every I, and crossed every T. He used a Greek word to talk about, about Joseph being just and righteous. He talked about the law, that, that Mary should have been put to death, but Joseph didn't want to do that. He wanted to put away privately, and then the Lord spoke. And he talked about the mercy and the grace of Joseph. And he talked about the character of Joseph as Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. An English teacher that could speak eloquently, but yet for 21 years you listen to one that made twice as good on math as I did English on the SAT. But God has called me. And God has used me for over 40 years to make a difference, to proclaim the good news of the gospel. 
that Jesus Christ changes hearts and Jesus Christ changes lives. When you and I are willing to offer up ourselves to him. You see, he's calling in the night. I look across this congregation. I see school teachers. I see people that make straight A's in college. I see people that run business. I see people that's been successful in business. I see ordinary people. But you know, God doesn't separate any of us. He calls us in the midst of the night. And he calls us by name. And he says, I've got a new thing for you. I want you to do. And so this morning, are we listening? Are we listening as he calls our name? If this church is going to be the church that Jesus Christ wants us to be, then we need for you to hear the call of the Lord to make that difference. If you can make a lesson plan, then you can proclaim the word of the Lord one Sunday. If you can lead a business, then you can stand before the people and lead the worship. Jamie did a tremendous job, and he didn't know anything about it until he walked into the door. But you see, God can use each and every one of us. It doesn't matter what our background might be. It doesn't matter who we are. God is calling each and every one of us by name. And he says, I have a new thing for you to do. Are you listening? In the midst of the night, as he calls your name, are you listening? My prayer is that we will make a difference in the life of this community and this church as we continue to reach out to do the will of God during these days. 571, go make all disciples. Father, as you call the name of Samuel, you have also called the name of us. And Heavenly Father, help us as we hear that call that we might do a new thing, that we might make a difference in the life of this church and the community in which we live, that the gospel of Jesus Christ might be proclaimed throughout our lives as we live out those lives as we share the good news. Heavenly Father, be with each and every one of these. May your spirit guide them and direct them in all the ways you would have them to go. Heavenly Father, we ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.